2023 is almost gone. Can't believe I'm saying this. And just past 6 p.m. on the 1st of December 2023. It's been 38 months since I became full-time self-employed as a motorsport professional in commentary, social media, reporting, journalism, and esports. I've had so many great uh, events that I went through every single one of them and told you what, how I felt about those particular trips. You know, we could be here for hours, but that's not the point of this vlog. The point of this vlog is to give you the behind the scenes 411 on what's going on with Alex Holmschmidt. So it's going to be a pretty busy schedule in the fact that tomorrow I fly to Bahrain for the 2023 Road Tax Max Challenge Grand Finals and then on the 10th I will then make a trek to another GCC country, Qatar, for the fourth running of the MENA Karting Championship Nations Cup which for the last three years has been at, in the Sultanate of Oman at the Muscat Speedway. And Oman are, is the place that's the spiritual home of the MENA Karting Championship Nations Cup. Of course, there's involvement from the FIA and now it's the Qatar Motor and Motorcycle Federation that will be running it for the next three years after the Oman uh, Automobile Association ran it for the last three. Had the opportunity to MC and commentate for 2021 and now I'm back and I'm the one that's going to be at this new facility. I can't really, really wait, but it means that I'm going to be away from home a lot. My big Samsonite case, which you'll probably see on your screens right now, is full to the brim. It's nearly 20 kilos of baggage that I'm bringing on an airplane, and I've got to repack that for tomorrow because um, I'm not 100% happy with how things are laid out and where things are, what pockets in what, and this, that, the other. You know, it's just a bit of OCD. It's just how I roll. But yeah. I'm in the Ramada by Wyndham Hotel, just by Cobham Services on the M25 junctions 9 and 10. And then, yeah, just waiting. Oh, like I said, I've got to get this packing done or repacking done. And then, um, which there'll be a time lapse for very shortly. And then I'm going to be catching up with my good buddy, uh, Max Spooner. We're going to meet up. Well, he's going to meet me here, pick me up, and then we're going to go have something to eat, have some have some good food and uh, you know just chew the fat and talk shit <laughs> but yeah so I'll catch you in a bit but here's that time lapse of me repacking my bag before catching up with Max tonight So that's all done. It's for me, sometimes it can be cathartic, whereby I know that I've got everything sorted out, ready to rock and roll without any issues. I've been able to lighten a little bit of the load um, out of my backpack, but there is one thing that I needed to take with me, which was some reading material. And the book that I am taking with me is by Will Buxton. Will, mate, I've read it cover to cover so many times, but the couple of weeks, that is going to get some good reading, and I'm really looking forward to doing that. So I will see you guys very, very shortly when I catch up with Mr Spooner. So good morning. Now I'm looking very official, official. So today is travel day. It's just gone five past nine and it is incredibly, incredibly foggy outside. I'll be completely honest with you. But had a good breakfast this morning, so nicely satiated and it's now the drive to Purple Parking at Heathrow, which is about 35 minutes away, give or take. 
So I'm just allowing for traffic because a lot of people will be going overseas to warmer climates in order to get some last minute sun.com before Christmas. So this is where the journey begins and um, I'll catch up with you all when I'm at Terminal 3. Right, coming up to 20 to 1 in the afternoon. And I'm here in the uh, quiet room for the Club at Aspire Lounge. Just chilling out. Gate's going to be called in about eight minutes, approximately, for the flight to Bahrain. And then it's time to set all the clocks forward, which I'm going to be doing on my, I'm going to do on my um, watch now so I don't forget. So this is just, for those wondering why I do that, it's just to try and get myself acclimatised towards the, you know, the time zone. So it's going to be 3.38 uh, at the minute in Barrow. And yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how things go on the other side. And yeah, I've just had a really good opportunity just to get some films downloaded on the phone and also some music. And yeah, just being able to chill out and just not have to worry about trying to find a seat somewhere. Um, I charged pretty much all my equipment. I mean, my phone's nearly fully charged. I'm using battery pack on the MacBook to do so, which has got 62%. And I've got my um, SIM card, my eSIM from Atalo to, uh, so literally when we hit the tarmac at Bahrain, I can then put that on and uh, yeah, then switch the O2 SIM card off and uh, go from there. So yeah, happy days and um, off to Malamal we go. A little bit of a lengthy queue, but the main thing is we are moving along. So it's time to de-stress and get in the air for a few hours and then, yeah, just after 11 o'clock, all right, uh, Ace, uh, Arabian standard time will be over there and I'll be on my way to the hotel back to the old Rotana like uh, two years ago so here's the start of a good trip So it's now just gone 20 to 2 in the morning here in Amwaj Islands, just on the other side of Bahrain, about a 15 minute drive away from the international airport. And it won't be the first time that I'll, have, I'll be here over the course of my stay. Um, so from that perspective, there's a few things I need to talk about and there's one that I really need to talk about because it's going to be quite a surreal feeling. Um, but let's get on through with what happened. Um, so, got on the plane at Gatwick. Sorry, Heathrow. <laughs> you can see how tired I am. I've been up since four o'clock this morning UK time and it's, it's coming up tight. 20 to, 20 to 11 uh, back home. So, got on the flight. Um, for some reason, British Airways had it on their database that I was a vegetarian, which is bullshit. <laughs> don't know how the settings got changed. Don't know what happened there. So, long and short of it, uh, we did get some turbulence. I fell asleep in the first hour, or first half an hour, and then woke up to see that we were at our cruising altitude, altitude and speed of 631 miles an hour, which is over a thousand kph. That's uh, twice as fast than uh, Bugatti uh, Chiron Supersport 300. And um, yeah, we, we landed in Bahrain at, I think it was 11.25. 
it took forever to every, for everyone to disembark. Then tried to go through, well, lengthy walk to um, entering the country. So I had an online visa, that wasn't an issue, but I was directed to the wrong place, uh, whereas I could have been put through into the fast track queue, which happened two years ago. Then went to get some duty free and completely forgot about my Samsonite case. So um, the chap, uh, I think his name was Neroy, who came and picked me up and brought me back here. Fantastic for him to do what he did and be quite patient with me. So I had to go to baggage services. Then one of the police, Bahraini poli border police came in and helped me out and I got my bag and we were off and yeah, got here. Got here, I think it was about an hour ago. Caught up with Arnaldo from Corridas, Corridas who are the main organisers of the Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals on behalf of BRP Rotax and also my good friend Natalie Parliamentshofer from Strategic Marketing. Um, so we had a little bit of a catch up and yeah, um, Arnaldo said, that looks to be a heavy bag. I went, yeah, I said, Bahrain's not my only destination over the next couple of weeks. He went, ah, fair enough. Doing, uh, and I said, yeah, I said, I'm doing Mina. And he went, oh, you're doing Mina, are you? I went, yeah. I said, it's, you know, I got contacted and yeah, it's a short flight to, to Doha. So, and it's a nice way to see out the season. So I can't really grumble. Um, also along with that, I now have my organization and media pass for this week, along with uh, my little wristband. I'll be wearing as of tomorrow. So this watch will be staying behind, I'm afraid. Not too sure what time I'm gonna go into the circuit. Natalie said, well, we're leaving at 7.30. I might do it just to be on the safe side, just uh, just get there and see the sight of, you know, I wanna be there when you see the joy on the people's faces when they get their carts raffled to them. So yeah, from, from that perspective, I'd love to be there for that more than anything. So yeah, it should be, should be pretty good. I'm gonna go downstairs and um, just sort of chill out. And then, I mean, I got, I've probably got about four hours sleep on the plane. So I've been trying to break the, 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 the shitty sleeping pattern that I've had, uh, thanks to the 70th anniversary Macau Grand Prix. So I've been trying to break that cycle for two weeks and I think I've finally nipped it in the bud. So I'll see you all in the morning. Good night. Well, actually, uh, there is someone I need to talk about, really. And, you know, you just... You know, the last the last year has seen a couple of great people from the world of karting taken away, and first of which in January of this year. I can't believe it's been nearly a year since his passing. That my good friend and Henry's good friend, um, Happy Balasawawi, passed away earlier on this year due to complications after just routine knee surgery. He was in his early 50s and he left behind a wife and a family and was the voice of Omani Motorsport. He was the media officer for the Omani Automobile Association, was a real big part of the MENA Karting Championship Nations Cup and I, both Henry and myself had the pleasure of working alongside him. So next week in the in Qatar is gonna be very emotional. Um, I'm, I'm actually welling up talking about it now because it's not going to feel the same. It's not going to feel the same with him not being there. <laughs> uh, and then later on this year, we lost, um, we lost another great person in this, Sue Potter, Ken's wife. And I, I 
I still remember the last time I caught up with her, all smiles and everything. And you know, she she was a a great person. I found out through our, our good friend Paul, my good friend Paul Clarson, chief scrutineer for the Euro Trophy BNL and also for the Grand Finals. Um, yeah. My advice to you lot out there, if you're wanting to get into this industry, live life, enjoy those moments because when it's your time, it is your time. And I'm just looking forward to enjoying the next two weeks and seeing out the season on high. And then of course I've got, other, as I said, I've got other things I need to do for For this weekend and um, I will see you all tomorrow when I get to the track at Bahrain. Most glorious sight in modern day karting. 400 brand new chassis ready to be raffled off. So this is the Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals, day one, here on the 3rd of December. And you can see all the teams lining up to get their team photos done in front of 400 chassis from our partners IPK Praga, Rural ART, Sodi Kart and the Charles Leclerc brand, which will be in action. Everyone will get their carts raffled to them a little bit later. So the raffle is very much underway. Drivers going through the exit and also the workshop as well, whilst they're at it. Okay, it's just gone 10 past 10 here in Bahrain on the 4th of December, which is a Monday. And well, first things first, I've got my new threats. Vielen lieben Dank, Selma, für deine Hilfe. Diese t shirts zu haben. Now it's been a very full-on first day and it's been really really good catching up with quite a few people uh, for those wondering about why I've ended up with a rather well-trimmed goatee well it isn't exactly 
well trimmed to the best of my ability. Had a slight issue with the beard trimmer this morning, so I went goatee and, you know, it, it still suits me. It still goes with a short back and sides. So long and short roundup of today has been the fact that, okay, yep, yeah, we've uh, got some non-qualifying practice underway for the grand finals. And yeah, I did quite a lot of writing today. I won't lie, but it all helps out in the end. And I basically finished well, my day on a technicality finished about 25 past five tonight. So yeah, just glad to be back in the hotel room. Had a nice dinner, had a really good catch up with our official photographer, Lukas. And tomorrow is another day. We've got a later start. I think the on-track action starts, I think probably just before two o'clock in the afternoon approximately. So it gives us a little bit more time to have a, a respite and maybe have a little light in tomorrow. So I'm now got, I've now got some other work to do that I need to do for other clients uh, whilst I've uh, been here. So yeah, it's all good. And uh, I shall see you all tomorrow and give you a real understanding of the scale of the tent that is part of the traveling circus that is the Rotax Max Challenge Grand Finals. I'll see you all tomorrow. So this is the view outside of my window. It is eight o'clock, Tuesday morning. And this is outside, look at that marina over there. You got some big ass shots. There's a lot of money here in Bahrain. And that is the side of the Art Rotana. Literally, it's like one big mirror. Impressive. And then you can see in the background, a little bit further back, surrounded by a lot of water. Let's bear in mind that we're on Amwaj Islands and some of the territory here in Bahrain has been purpose-built, manufactured, as opposed to nature providing us with what we need. But yeah, time for brekkie and then hopefully can get a lift to the track very soon. As you can hear, Mr. Bodez is in the background and sunset is very much closing in here. The Bahrain International Park Circuit, and then we'll see some floodlight action a little bit later. So that's it for Tuesday. It's coming up to five to ten. It's been a pretty long day, but a later start. Tomorrow is going to be a long one. I'm going to be here quite early, and we're running all the way through into the night time. So yeah, tomorrow's going to be a busy one, but also. Um, we're going to have a returnee on the vlog again. So I'll be jumping on comms with Henry Bodette for qualifying heat 1 of E20 tomorrow. Should be a good one, but yeah, see you tomorrow when we are on our way to the circuit. Back on the vlog, and this bloke's back again. Uh, oh, Jeez. poor you. Yes, so we're about to do the first race of the Grand Finals. Here we go. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, night time has fallen here in Bahrain. The first race is about to get underway, and joining me in the commentary box, as he has done for the last several years here at the Grand Finals, resident Rotax Euro Trophy BML Championship commentator Alex Goldschmidt. Alex, welcome back to Bahrain. It's nice to be back sharing the commentary box with you. Yes, indeed. You've pretty much stolen what my stat of the day was going to be because it's nice to be back to oh. Bahrain for the second time in three years. So good evening, good evening everybody. Yeah, I, I mean, it's great to be back with uh, the entire Rotax Racing family and a very different situation to what we had two years ago. But of course, E20, we've got a new class. We've got Masters this year instead of Seniors. We've also got the E10 e Cart Cup this weekend, mm -hmm. which is going to be a new addition to the Rotax Racing family. Yes, indeed. 
Uh, and great to see it's unveiled in Portimao last year. But you know what? I'm really, really excited. We've got a total of 24 drivers from multiple different nationalities. And of course, we've got the iconic boost function on these e-carts. Of course, that is something that we're going to get into uh, a lot here. Around Bahrain, uh, the circuit here, 1,400 metres. It is uh, a very, very useful tool to have. Lots of overtaking opportunities. We've got a British driver on pole position. Uh, a quick look back at, see, what's the history? Because you joined me for the very first E20 uh, senior f uh, grand final, Alex, here two years ago. And uh, where are we now? Well, Oscar Palmel from France, have to give him uh, a bit of a shout out. He was on our, our inaugural uh, E20 champion when we only had one class. Of course, the E20 has run with the uh, DEKM uh, for previous years, but then it jumped onto what was called the Project E20 Tour, then became part of the Euro Trophy for the last couple of seasons. And Spencer, you mentioned, is one driver that actually managed to qualify through the final round of the Euro Trophy as being the weekend winner at Paul Fletcher International back in September. Yeah, and of course, being the, 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 the commentator for the Euro Trophy, uh, which, you know, you've seen a lot of the E20 racing this year at various places. Mm -hmm. um, looking, at the, looking at the starting grid, you know, Matt's over half in third position. Lewis Smith from Bahrain starting in fourth place. Uh, you can see the carts on the rolling lap now. I was going to say you can't hear them, but you can see them. Here is your starting lineup for what will be an eight lap race, eight, Alex. Eight lap race indeed. Uh, that will be for both qualifying heats one today, one tomorrow, Henry. And it's going to be a standing start. So, so as you can see behind me, it is late. <laughs> it's been a long day at the circuit, but a very, very good one. Daily report is now all sorted, so Natalie is getting on with that one. And yeah, it's been a good one. Really enjoyed today. We've got our qualifying practice done, first set of qualifying heats, lengthy, lengthy daily report today. But yeah, myself, Natalie, Jen, Daryl, Henry, we're all still here at the circuit. So, yeah, it's been a late one. Uh, so we're hopefully, well, Henry's still got two bloody scripts to write. Jesus. It never stops when you're a commentator and you're having to do bits and pieces for voiceovers and other stuff. But you know what? We wouldn't do this if we didn't love it. So, inshallah, see you tomorrow morning as we will have our last set of qualifying heats before on Friday we go to pre-finals and then seniors, DD2 and minis get reduced to the final 36 for Grand Finals Day on Saturday. However, the top 12 that don't make it through our mini max will then take part in the inaugural E10 e-cart cup that will then have free practice Friday night qualifying Saturday morning and then they will take centre stage right after we have the first of multiple grand finals E20 Senior and Masters. So inshallah see you in the morning. Good night. Welcome back Ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at live pictures of the pre-grid area as the E20 Senior and Masters drivers get set for their one and only heat race of the day here in Bahrain. And the driver on the right-hand side of your screen, just going off picture, Spencer Braum, he was your heat winner yesterday. Driver on the left-hand side of your screen, Mats Johan Overhoff, another very strong contender. Joining me in the commentary box, as always, for E20 Junior, is resident Rotax Euro Series commentator Alex Goldschmidt. Alex, it was a great day yesterday, and today the racing promises to be even better. But the E20 race in particular was very close, not only in senior, but in masters as well. Yeah, Borada, Salam Alaikum, good morgen. Good morning, everybody. Great to be back alongside with you as well. Uh, yeah, very, very close in E20 Masters yesterday. Juan Concalves uh, winning by the narrowest of margins ahead of Germany's Andreas Matis. Six one thousandths of a second. Uh, of course, the racing was very, very close. Very, very frantic at times. Yes. But altogether very, very clean, of course. Um, but 
There's one thing I've got to do. It's the traditional stat of the day. Yes, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Ready? Drum roll, please. It's Alex Goldschmidt's stat of the day. So, over the course of every single grand final since last year at Portimao, I have been calculating the total amount of laps and the total distance covered. So far, after yesterday's opening qualifying heats, we've covered a total of 3,050 laps, equating to 4,317.7 uh, 12, kilometres, which you can fly to one way from Bahrain to the following countries. Go on, then. Sweden. Yes. Thailand. Never been. China. Love to go. And you might have to do a bit of fuel saving if you want to get to Seoul, Taiwan and Sepang. Oh, OK, I can do that. So that's Sepang six. in January, six... S S Six of the six. My question nations. to you, Alex Goldschmidt, is can you get from here, with all the laps we're going to run, can you get from here to Landau International Raceway, global home of world motorsport, birthplace of champions? Can we? We will. We will. We there will. We I, I, I will find then that out ready for tomorrow. Life is good. Okay, <laughs> let's have a look down at the drivers. As you can see, conditions very different at the moment from what they did in their heat race yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's blisteringly hot today. You saw a couple of drivers sort of hiding in the shade. Let's have a little uh, name check of a couple of our contenders. Christopher Holst is there in cart number 603. In fact, on cue, there is the uh, 14 year old driver from Zurich drivers waiting to the last minute to get their crash helmets on we're going to have Spencer Brom and Knud Nielsen there's Knud on the front row who do you think is going to get be f favoured by these hot conditions and on the flip side of the coin who do you think might find themselves under a bit more pressure now that the heat is really on quite well, literally well it was quite abrasive this morning coming into the circuit when we rocked up at about half past eight quarter to nine this morning so warm up is is not necessarily the best optimum time to put heat cycles through the Mojo D5s because oh, mm -hmm. they may slightly cook a little bit. Uh, half of the field in both seniors and masters went out this morning on the warm-up, so Marius Ros was the fastest out there ahead of Knud Nielsen. Nielsen got a really, really dip bad start in the first heat under the floodlights last night, which right. allowed yes. Overhoff to get through. Uh, Nielsen, unfortunately, was one of three drivers in E20 Senior, which included Lewis Smith, Sebastian Bach, and Knud Nielsen. They all got front-faring penalties, uh, so dropping Lewis Smith, Sebastian Bach, and Knud Nielsen to round out the top 13. So, as we wait for the uh, signal to be given from our excellent circuit team here at the Bahrain International Circuit, quickly run down what was the overall result yesterday, Alex? So, Spencer Braun picked up the victory by 1.9 seconds over Mats Johan Overhoff in the qualifying heat one yesterday. Chris Holst, Philip Lewacker, who is joining you on Seniors this week on commentary, Ed of Piotr Borowicz from Poland, Marius Roz, Yu Chen Q, Dominic Diak, uh, Frederick Lemieux and Sidi Kong Sidi rounded out the top 10. Lewis Smith, Sebastian Bach and Knud Nielsen rounded out the top 13 with Cameron Crockett and Alejandro Bam, uh, Brambi, Barambio Pereira uh, in 15th. Then we get on to then Masters was Joao yep. Goncalves, um, Andreas Matis and Cyprus's Igor Mukin covered by three and a half tenths. Then there was a bit of a gap to Gilberto Loeca, Phil Philip Stad in fourth, uh, Manuel Martins, Hector Ramirez, Joao Diaz, uh, Yi Sen Shu from Chinese Taipei in the island of Taiwan, rounding out eighth, and uh, Jose Hurtado from Chile completing uh, the nine strong in uh, E20 Masters. Grand Theft Auto 5, Bahraini <laughs> edition in a Mazda. <laughs> when something goes wrong, uh, ah, kurva. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the car, and here is my buddy Lukash, our official photographer, behind the lens. Um, we've just, Hi guys. We've just uh, dropped off Bartosz, and we're heading back to the hotel, but it's been a busy few days, isn't it, mate? Yes, it is. It's uh, seven days behind us already, and two more on the front, so... Yep, so we're heading back to the Art Hotel to grab a well-needed dinner earlier than last night for a lot of us, including... Henry and Natalie, who didn't make it in time for the buffet, and we have the uh, 
the SBE hire car. Of course, yeah. Uh, screaming bitch engine is what we called it. Uh, and it's got no brakes either, apparently. Is that right? <laughs> no pads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know. No pads, no suspension. Yeah. Uh, brake discs feel like they're warped as soon as the Lukash hits the brake pedal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's been a bit of a, a, bit of a, a good day today. Yeah, nice nice was... weather. Yeah. This man was lobster beetroot red earlier on this week. Right? Yeah, white inside. <laughs> white, white inside, yes. It was like trying to get lobster meat ready for a lobster roll. Yeah. Uh, Henry wasn't actually that far off, but that was mainly on his chrome dome, his forehead. <laughs> uh, so I will catch up with you all tomorrow because it's uh, pre-finals day yeah. and I've still got work to, to do. I don't know about yourself. I think you're done for the day, aren't you? <laughs> still have a lot of work tomorrow, but today, off. Yeah, so I've, <laughs> as, uh, as yeah, Lukas just stabs on the accelerator there. I've still got revisions from Junior, Senior and DD2. We're waiting quite a time, so Natalie, who's um, head of the media team here at the Grand Finals, she just basically said, we'll get it done later, it's not a problem. You, you've, you've done the majority of the work, it's just doing a little odds and sods and revisions. So myself and Lukas, we yeah. will see you tomorrow. Sure, see you. So good morning from the paddock tent. It is pre-finals day here in Bahrain for the 2023 Road Sax Max Challenge Grand Finals. So in this tent, we have 384 drivers from 62 different nations. Now after today's racing, which will take place under the floodlights, 96 drivers will not make it through to the Grand Finals themselves, which take place tomorrow throughout the sunshine. However, the top 12, of Minimax that don't make it through to the top 36 for the grand final tomorrow will head on to the E10s which will be mated to their respective Birrell ART chassis that have been the chassis partner for well it's one of the chassis partners we've also got Sodi Kart with uh, E20 of course new Sigma DD2 front Nassau and front fairing we've also got the Charles Leclerc brand DD2 Masters, Sodicar are supporting E20 Masters, E20 Seniors and Sodicar, IPK Praga, Micromax and Junior Rotax and then the remaining classes which will be DD2 Masters and Minis are supported by Burrell ART. Never will you see anything else like this in the world of karting, it's a sight unlike any other. So yeah, it's going to be a good day but we've got the traditional driver's picture and the parade and then we go racing under the nighttime sky here in Bahrain. <laughs> Someone I spot is trying to get a tan. Basti. <laughs> It's E20 time next, and joining me in the commentary box is Alex Goldschmidt. Alex from Rotax Media, welcome back. We've got uh, the pre-final. It's going to be a ten lapper, yes. So a bit longer for the E20s and the E20 Masters. But, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, please. It's time for the Alex Goldschmidt stat of the day. Take it away, Alex. Thank you very much, Henry. Good evening, everybody. Uh, the total laps covered now after two days of competitive racing, 8,322. A lot. Which gives us a total of 11,767 kilometers. So I you can- 768, sorry. Yep, nearly. Uh, but you can do 
uh, you can fly return trips to South Africa and Japan. You Love can two. do two or more return trips to Austria, Germany, Latvia, Excellent. Lithuania, Estonia, Denmark, Finland, Please. Germany, Italy, Portugal, Malta, okay. Spain, Cyprus, Greece, and Poland. Love to go to Warsaw. You can also twice. do one-way trips to New Zealand, Ooh, Argentina, please. Brazil, mm. Australia, and yeah. the United States of America. Ooh, right, but right, you yes. asked me a question yes, about Landau International Raceway, home of global motorsport, birthplace, birthplace of champions. champions. Thank you very much. You can make two and a half return trips. Oh, well, I, I, you can have the half back. I'll go um, back and forth to Landau International Raceway twice. Well, well I'm going to throw another nation into there. Uh -oh. uh, you can make almost 20 return trips to Dubai and the United Arab Emirates, whereas if you're can in Can I it, get duty-free if I go? I was, I'm sure that Guy Sheffield might be able to arrange something, Thank but... Thank you, that's all right. There was 20 but, trips to Dubai. But, but then I'm David, <laughs> bright, by the way, as well. But then I'm going to add a 28th out of the 62 nations. Go on, then. Well, Bahrain, it's not too far. It's only round the, uh, round the corner, oh, isn't really? it? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Now, uh, people spotting. Here's the VIP area. Uh, there's uh, the British team manager, Russ Carter. It was his 40th birthday earlier this week. Um, his younger brother and better looking brother, Sean, uh, said, you've got to make sure that there's Dan Holland. There's uh, Dan Hannum, I think, of some of the drivers from the UAE. You've got people from Belgium there. You've got uh, Mr. Smith from Bahrain uh, about to watch his son, Lewis, go mm -hmm. out. You've got lots of people from Rotax BRB. Hello, Mr. Smith. How are you? Give us a wave. You're on camera <laughs> he snuck into VIP again oh did him he out. Oh, I know Cheeky. even I went up to VIP <laughs> earlier on so I had to bribe the security guard mm. but there, enough of that and, and there is the Rotax club uh, who have been feeding and watering the distributors uh, throughout this you've got the South African team in there there's the South African distributors mm. I've uh, begged and pleaded for my tickets to the African Open next year in March which takes place in Cape Town yep. March 22nd and 23rd and I'm going to keep on going it just gives you an idea of how expansive this circuit is but while we look at the pictures what else have you been learning uh, Alex from the Rotax media side of things and on the E20 side of things well uh, very interestingly enough that uh, again for warm-up this morning not everybody went out on the circuit you know the, there was a breeze in the air it was you know, blue skies up above. Very, very abrasive and very, very potent sunshine from up above. My so forehead can attest to that. Exactly. But also, you asked me about weight differential between the carts. Yes. There is a slight difference. 220 kil uh, kilograms is the minimum weight for E20 seniors. Mm -hmm. Four additional for E20 masters. Now... We briefly talked about the E10 e-karting cup that's yes. going to be taking part, uh, taking place tomorrow. They're going to be going into qualifying, uh, non-qualifying practice tonight. Qualifying first thing tomorrow. Okay. And then the e-kart cup is straight after the grand final for masters and seniors. Oh, so we get to do double bubble. Yes, indeed. Uh, it's 115 kilograms is the minimum weight, and I've had a nice chat with BRP Rotax's very own Stephen Chapman. Okay. Who says that the performance is comparable to a current internal combustion engine Minimax. So the idea is what has happened, and I haven't got the statistics in front of me, so I don't know which Minimax drivers have finished 37, no. 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, and 47, 48. The top 12 drivers who didn't qualify mm -hmm. for the main event tomorrow, they will go into the E10 Karting Cup. What Rotax are doing now is they are simply taking the internal combustion Minimax engine off their yes. car and putting the E10 power unit on. It takes... 15 minutes. And then how long to charge? 45. And, and then, then you're good to go. Then you're good to go. At the same speed? Uh, same speed as a Minimax... And uh, about the same weight or a little bit heavier? 115 kilos is the minimum weight. So it's about on a par with the current Minimax. So what, what Rotax have done here... Yes. And ...is they have created uh, an electric power unit... Yes. ...that is... Instantly transferable, same mm -hmm. chassis, same chassis frame. Yes. Any any sh any 950 mil chassis. Exactly. You take your Rotax BRP125 internal combustion engine off. You put an E10 power unit on, easy as you like. Even a bit like me could do it. Yes, it's that easy, but also you have two different battery versions. You have a twin battery system, mm -hmm. or you can have a single battery system, which reduces the power, but also allows drivers as young as six, like, say, a Bambini, because we've got the 30-second board about to go out. But you can, within an hour, you can charge it, get back out on the track, go in the same speed, but with an electric power. Do yes. you know what they call that? The future. Yes.
Well done, Rotax. And, and it's here see now. That tomorrow. And it's here now. The future <laughs> is today. Fantastic work. The drivers are getting themselves ready. Joining me in the commentary box for the E20 race, it is Alex Goldschmidt. Alex, welcome back. And the atmosphere quite literally is crackling. Drivers are on the grid. Now, this could be a very, very special race. Yes, because I mean that for the third year in Grand Finals, we will have three different winners in E20 Seniors. Also, the fact the Masters class, a new edition replacing juniors. Of course, juniors have been running as part of the Euro Trophy this year. But, of course, the excitement is palpable. It is really, really such a special occasion here at the Grand Finals because Finals Day is where the fade into, uh, into the background. Yes. And it's winner all. And this is what is really exciting. Absolutely. And... Uh, the history of this class. It made its debut one here in Bahrain. Oscar Pellemel from France was victorious on that occasion. Head of Hannes Morin from Sweden and David Aulesna from Poland. Last year in Portimao, Jesper Schoberg from Sweden took the win. Luca Kirster was second and Chen Han Lin became the first ever driver from Chinese Taipei in the island of Taiwan to uh, get a podium in the grand finals. The E20 Masters drivers will start behind them. Here is a look at the driver that will start fourth on the grid. Spencer Braum from the United Kingdom. Uh, Philippe Luaka, who will be joining me on commentary later on, will be starting on the outside of row number one. They take the backstops off these carts, which you need to take them off the trailer. Alex, uh, we've got a very short moment of time for your stat of the day. Well, also, firstly, I have to wish uh, someone who is very much entrenched in the Rotax racing family a very many happy returns. Of course, one of the people behind Karting Genk, the home of champions, many happy returns to Kuhn Lemons Happy today. birthday, Kuhn. But, uh, well, the stat of the day is the distance and the laps that we have covered. Yesterday, we covered a total of 4,148 laps, which brings our running total to 12,470. So we covered a distance of just over 5,867 kilometers, bringing us to 13,322 of completed racing laps done by every driver so far. Okay, thank you, Alex. Is the image first, congr second, congratulating first, the victor celebrating with the vanquished but we're all winners here all the drivers have won to get here overhoff and braum this is spencer braum's first major international race he runs as a privateer in the uk he won the event at pfi to get this ticket overhoff has focused predominantly on e-karting over the last couple of years alex you and i uh we, we we're so blessed to be able to get to know the drivers and their families uh we don't have favorites yeah. um, obviously we know some drivers better than others just exactly. because they're we, we don't have favorites but when you do get to know family members and they just they sort of you warm to them um mm. not a nicer driver than Mats johan overhoff he's admitted himself that for the last couple of years he has called himself the B final bandit because <laughs> he has not be he has worked so hard to yes. get to this point it goes to prove to any driver watching at home whether you are just starting out in karting or whether you've had a rubbish year if you keep working hard enough like Mats johan overhoff has you can become a champion 
Also, very interesting chat I had with Spencer Braum in the uh, the iconic tent that we have here at the Grand Finals year on year. He said, do you remember when you commentated on me back at uh, Wilton Mill in the depths of December in 2018? I went, you're kidding. And like, <laughs> literally, it's quite funny how everyone's journey is in some way interlinked. And you know what? I c that, folks, what Spencer and Matt have just showcased is togetherness and 100% sportsmanship and that is a, if that's not a personification of the grand finals I don't know what is because that just is a heartfelt moment it is indeed from Finland Alex what happened here well basically McLaughlin went for the move and then tried to hit the brakes you can see smoke coming from the rear axle is he's completely locked up of course these run on the traditional brake systems on the wow. barrel ARTs Ben McLaughlin was very very lucky that neither Salmi or Matlack turned left <laughs> yeah. and might have collected him in the process so they were very very they saw the smoke and went oh right get out of the way I'm yes. down the stretch they are nearly so a little bit of a slight nudge between them. Rubbing is racing, as we both know, Henry, as VT Salmi going through turn nine and turn ten over the crest for one final time, down through 11, through the reverse corkscrew. It's going to be one more chance, possibly out through. Oh, look off from Matlack! And VT Salmi gets through turn 13. Unfortunately, Serbia denied because out of the final corner, your inaugural E10 E Cup, Ch Cup champion is VT Salmi from Finland. So now it is coming up to quarter past six, and I'm not down for the podium. <laughs> the reason being is that sometimes we need to work through this. There have been multiple different revisions over the course of the day, so it is never easy. The work is never done, so I'm still writing up and making amendments. So still things yet to be decided, one class still to be confirmed, and the podium celebration is currently underway. So, if I can, I'm going to try and get down as soon as whatever happens, very shortly. So, Shukran Bahrain. Thank you. And Inshallah, peace be with you. That's it. 2023 Road Tax Max Challenge Grand Finals are done. And look at that. Everyone, apart from some of the staff, have left the paddock. I have to say a big thank you to Hassan and his team done a fantastic job hosting this event again and it is a case of race your way 2024's now being revealed heading back to Sarno 19th to the 26th of October at the Salaguito Internazionale in Napoli yeah and we celebrate 25 years of the Grand Finals so that's it Bahrain over and out but this is only part one the Middle Eastern adventure that concludes my vlog series for 2023 and I will see you on the flip side because next time it's a new country, a new adventure and a familiar event. See you next time.